welcome back to another episode of The Magic Sponge. Rob Beckett here with Ian Smith and Jimmy Ballard. Yeah, hey. I'm back. Hello, everyone. How are you? Not too bad. Good, good. Um, well, I think we should introduce our guest. Oh, You're very excited this. about this, Jimmy. I, uh, our listeners I'm have excited, wanted you on for a long time. I'm a little time. bit nervous. Why are you nervous? <laughs> well, you can probably hear from his voice. It is Barry Fry, everyone. Yeah. How are you, guys? Thank you for coming on. I'm brilliant. It's my pleasure. Never a dull moment when James is about. <laughs> I've got... First of all, before we start, it's one of them things, because he was one of my first managers yeah. that um, basically helped my career start. I'm a little bit nervous, and I'm a little bit... I don't know. I suppose I'm nervous. You are that little yeah, kid. Yeah, 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 sure. Sure. Let me tell you, he's never been nervous in his <laughs> no, life. I am, Bez, obviously. He's a confident obviously. young man. Yeah, so well, normally... This is going to be a whip, whip, bit weird for me. Before we get going, it might take me a little bit of time to get where I well, am. No, normally, he's like... Yeah. 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 Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. I'll be all right. Never heard you call James before, as so. well. I know. No, 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 it's the first time I've called him it, but we're in a posh place. <laughs> and he should have got a fuck in front of him. Yeah, we've had <laughs> you, you can swear on this podcast, so don't worry if it oh, anything good. slips out. Uh, I was going to apologise to the ladies and gentlemen, my foul and abusive language. It's nothing personal, it's just a <laughs> fucking lack of vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to make the most of what you got. <laughs> Correct. What was he like to, to have on your team? Brilliant. Yeah? Absolutely brilliant. I, so I, how long ago would it have been, Bess? Oh, I don't know, mate. I don't know time. what happened yesterday. But... I, I used to watch him sort of... Well, it was between 2001 and 2003 he played yeah, Peter Yeah, I, I used to watch him play for West Ham reserves every yeah. three or four weeks. Yeah. What a waste of talent. Yeah. So I went in for him and uh, I got him, which was brilliant. On a free? Yeah, yeah. And um, he played for me. We he, he played on a wing, but he had so much ability that I wanted to get him on the ball as much as possible. And I had a couple of... Uh, <clears throat> Phil Chappell was my coach, was Wayne Phil Turner, yeah. and they kept telling me what Jimmy couldn't do, run back and do this and do that. I said, well, that's not what I got him for. I've got him to be the leader of the orchestra, give him the ball. Every time you get the ball, give it to Jim, give it to Jim, give it to Jim. Yeah, and he good. sorted it out, and he was like that. He wanted the ball all over, and he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The fans loved him, the players loved him, the coaches didn't, but the manager did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was he ever challenging? Oh, yeah. Oh, he always had something to say. I <laughs> thought he'd go on to manage England, to be honest. <laughs> I've always voiced my opinion, yeah. Even like when I was like that age, 21, I used to always be confident and always yeah. want. You're dead right. I wanted the ball everywhere. Like if it, Mark Tyler was in goal, I used to drive him mad. Roll it out to me. Yeah, I used to it. go behind a centre half and get the bloody ball. The centre half like, what it, is he doing? He used to play sweeper, midfield, <laughs> up yeah. front. You're playing centre half at the moment, are you? Yeah, yeah, from the Vets team. From the Vets team. Yeah. But he, he was a very exciting player. He, 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 he had a, a brilliant combination of short passes, long passes, and he had a brilliant shot and he scored sensational goals and he brought the house down. And um, I should have got a million pounds for this young man. I spoke to his manager, Paul Jewell, and I said, I want a million pounds. And he said, OK, I don't do the dealings, the chairman does, okay. and all that. Yeah. Obviously, the owner of Wigan thought three people trying to do the deal. Yeah. And in the end, I said to Jim, I'm getting as much money as I can for you, but whatever, I promise you'll go. Yeah. And he did. We made it happen, didn't For you? the smallest fee ever. But well, was, was it 340 grand two, or 200? Three, 375. 375. Yeah, which... Considering the money I've got for players that ain't fit to lace his boots yeah. was embarrassing, but got taken out of my hands. It's yeah. one, of, one of the few transfers in 20 years, I've been at Peterborough for over 20 years, that's been taken out of my hands and dealt with by pure idiots that knew <laughs> nothing about <laughs> football, <laughs> finance or nothing else. But you're still there, Baz, yeah? I'm still there, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fought them all, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've never been at a place for 20 years where I've been hated from not, day one. I can one. assure you, you know you're not hated there. It doesn't work like that. You're definitely not hated, yeah. mate. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, so 375, not bad, is it? No, it's not bad, but not as good as it could have been. I went to Peterborough just to play football, and I love what... I, I first remember when I met Baz, it was me and my dad. I yeah. come up. We come in the Don't room, and me, I, I, play, I played a reserve game on... I think it was a Tuesday night. And Bad's come up to me and he went, um, we've got a game, Bournemouth, the next day. I want you to play. And I played that evening because I was fit. But I don't know if you remember. And Peterborough's pitch then was like 
there was mud everywhere. And I thought, cool, I'm going to be Bad a bit heavy field. legged. Bad field. Yeah, a bit heavy legged. I'm going to feel I played last night. But I thought, sorry, I'm going to play centre mid. And I played one of the best games I've ever played as well. I always remember that. And I come in, and me and my dad sat in front of me. He goes, look, I'll give you this this much of a week, little contract here, but we're going to play. You're going to play. And I didn't have that for three years at yeah, West Ham. Yeah. So it was a great opportunity for me. And I've got to say, I owe a lot to this man. Because yeah. he, he let me play as well and express myself, which there ain't yeah, a lot I'll of managers out there. That, that, that which you've done all, all Jim the time. Jim needed a manager that believed in him and said, Jim, go out there, the rest of the team, give him the ball and we'll get At on that with time it. In my career, I needed exactly that. So that's yeah. exactly where, exactly, yeah, how it started, really. Oh, well, that's enough about you. Let's talk about our guests. Okay. It's getting a bit too okay. too much now. <laughs> Good, You're loving it on. too much. What else did I do, Barry? What else was <laughs> I good at? I know, it was nice. Thank you, because these There's think a... they give me shit all the time. Do <laughs> you get what I mean? Oh, yeah. I can do you know what I mean? You think you're yeah. this, oh, you think you're that. Jimmy. So it's nice coming from a, <laughs> a great voice here. Yeah. I know. They played for Juventus. And I know, they think that. Or was it Yeah, You was a lorry driver. He's a comic. He actually sure. thinks he could play professional football. I nev- I've never said that. I can't say that. I've never said time. I could play what professional you football. Say? You said you got I a powerful well. shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, you played. You was at Man United, weren't you? At sixteen. Um, yeah. Uh, I had two careers. Background. I had two careers. One as a player, and one yeah. as a manager. Uh, they've both been failures, but you're going to hear about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I played for England schoolboys six times. Scored yep. five goals. One of those goals was at Wembley in front of 95,000 people. When we beat Scotland, 5-3. The good old days. The good old days. And uh, playing for England that day was Len Badger, Ronnie Harris. Len Badger? Yeah, Sheffield United, 500 games. And um, Ronnie Harris, you've heard of. Pleaty, you've heard of. Yeah. Uh, Playing for Scotland was Bobby Monker, George Graham. They went on to become... Great players, oh, great yeah, managers. Yeah, yeah. I went on to become a has been that never was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit harsh. That's ridiculous. But I, I, I left. I, I left school and joined Man United um, yeah. as an apprentice, and then they gave me a pro contract. So I was there for four years. But after a year, uh, Matt Busby called me in the office, and he said, uh, "Barry." You're a flash cockney bastard. I said, "Thank you very much, boss." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I got these two shy." Irish boys coming over from Belfast, Eric McMordy and George Best, and I want you to look after Bestie. I went, no problem. Oi, after two days, Bestie ran back home to Ireland, homesick. <laughs> so I didn't do a very good job, <laughs> but, but he, he looked after me magnificent yeah. in my managerial career. He helped me out no end, and... Uh, and uh, I lasted in management 31 years. Which yeah. well, you, that was, Dun- was it Dunstable? Dunstable, first yeah. Well, that well, was a bit of Keith Cheeseman. <laughs> bit of a dodgy character, Keith Cheeseman, wasn't he? he? Sounds, like, well, I, look, I've got to got got tell you an unbelievable story about Keith. So Keith Cheeseman... He, he was the Is Keith, he in prison, did you say? <laughs> Keith Cheeseman was the chairman of Dunstable Town yeah, yeah. and he went to prison. Yeah, well, let, let, let me tell you the good things he'd done. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I, I joined Dunstable. He wasn't there when I joined. They'd been bottom of the league eight years on the trot. My first crowd was 34 people. <laughs> 34 people. That with the squad. So, um, anyway, I, w- I went to Bestie. I was in Manchester one Sunday. I went to Bestie and I said, Look, I'm Mick Dunstable, you know, he's so just taken over and we ain't even got 25 quid for a set of nets and all that. And it was he, he, he owned a nightclub at the time and I was in there. And before I left, he wrote me a cheque, Dunstable Town Football Club, 25 quid for a set of nets. Yeah. So that gave us a bit of publicity. At the end of the season, I took over in March. By the end of the season, we were bottom of the league for the ninth year on the trot. So we had to do summer Something, publicity. Yeah, yeah. So in the summer, <clears throat> pre-season was just starting and I went to Manchester one Sunday night went to Bestie's uh, nightclub, Slack, Slack Alice, sat with him and said, George, I want you to do me a <laughs> favour. <laughs> and he says, uh, what's the favour, Baz, anything? I said, I want you to guess for me in two pre-season friendlies. He went, yeah, no problem. What club are you with again? I said, Dunstable. He went, there might be a problem. I said, yeah, I thought there might. He went, no, I'll play, but Tommy Doherty's still got my registration at Old Trafford. I said, no problem, I'll go and see him at the cliff in the morning. <clears throat> so Monday morning I went in the cliff. Paddy Crerham What's was the cliff? there. The cliff was a training ground at Man United oh, okay. at that time that I'd spent four years at, and yeah. I looked after Bestie for three of them, so to speak, not very well. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, pa- Paddy Crerham was there. He was a player in the four years I was there. He's now assistant manager at Tommy Dock. 
So I went, all right, Paddy. He went, yeah. I said, I've come to see Tommy Doc. He went, do you know him? I went, nah. He said, I'll take you up. So he we went upstairs, knocked on the door. Doc shouted, come in. We went in. Paddy says, boss, this is one of our old players, Barry Fry. Barry, this is the boss, Tommy Doherty. Pleased to meet you, son. What can I do for you? I said, you, Mr Doherty, can give me permission to play George Best in two pre-season friendlies. And he said, what club are you with? I said, Dunstable Tan. Dunster Bubble? <laughs> what makes you think Bestie will play for you at Dunster Bubble and I can't get him to play here in Man United? <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> so Paddy, Paddy butted in and went, boss, save his kids together. Yeah, go and ask him. Well, I'd already asked him. So I went to the local cab, stayed there two hours, 28 cups of tea, bit of toast and all that, went back. When I went back, they'd finished training. Paddy was in the car park. I went, Paddy! Besties agreed to play. He went, yeah, I know. He phoned me last night. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he took me up. We knocked the door. Doc shouted, come in. He'd finished training. He was in the bath. So I went up to him and went, Tom, <laughs> thanks a million, mate. Besties agreed to play. And he jumped out of that bath. He went, besties agreed to play for you. It dunced the bubble. Who's your opponents? I said, I don't know. I ain't got anybody yet. <laughs> So then he said, I'll bring a Man United 11. Oh. So can you imagine one Tuesday night, George Best guest in for Dunstable Town via Man United 11? We had 10,000 people inside Greasy Park, another 5,000 in the high street, couldn't get in. Hey, and we beat the bastards 3 2, and we was on news at 10. Dunstable had arrived. That's quality, isn't it? That's and because he played uh, Bobby Tamblin's Cork Show. It was the next game he played, but the publicity that generated yeah. enabled me to get yeah, yeah. players. Yeah, yeah, we won the league that year. Which was money in the through the uh, gate as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, well, he yeah, yeah, was unbelievable what he done. How old was Bestie then? Though? Was he still oh, he's like finished? No, he'd finished. Oh, he, right, he, yeah. Well, he was still under contract at Old Trafford, but he'd refused to play for Tom because they'd had an argument. But uh, uh, anyway, I mean, because of that, um, you know, we got promotion. We went to the Premier League. Southern League, Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, November of the next year, chairman comes up to me and he went... This is Keith Cheeseman, yeah? Yep. <laughs> Barry, I'm throwing a Christmas party, <laughs> so I want all the players' names and addresses and ask the players if they want their parents to come or their brothers or their sisters or their mates, give me their names and addresses and I'll invite them to the Christmas party. So I've had a meeting with the lads and I went, oi, Keith's, Keith's having a party, invite who you want. All I want is your names and addresses, write them down for me. So you give me 32, you give me 16, you give me 28, you give me 14. I had hundreds, hundreds of names and addresses. <laughs> give them to Keith, thought no more of it. <laughs> had a Christmas party, thought no more of it. March, seven Black Mariahs come into Greasy Park, arrested the chairman. What he'd done with all these names and addresses <laughs> was took 10 grand loans out in everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> so he got six years for embezzling three quarters of a million. Oh, my God. Including oh, Jim. Oh, I, wish I, yeah, I wish I'd have thought of it. <laughs> what, a, what a chairman. <laughs> Unbelievable, yeah. So crazy. then, of course, this is March, so we have to go to the beginning of May. Yeah. He's inside. We're getting no wages or nothing. Yeah. So I phoned Bestie up and I said, George, you ain't going to believe this. Keith's inside <laughs> six years for embezzling three quarters of a million. He says, thank fuck I never went into business with him, <laughs> yeah. So I said, we've got a problem, though. The players ain't been paid a penny for five weeks. But Harry Aslam, who's in charge of Luton, which is the closest side to Dunstable, is going to fetch a side down at the end of the season and all the proceeds are going to the players because they've been brilliant for the five weeks, they ain't got any money. Bestie said, yeah, I'll be there. Because he was there, it was another full house. Because we had a full house, all the lads got their five weeks' money. Oh, brilliant. God yeah. bless you, George, best, different class. Oh, he's a legend. But then, although we finished second in the Premier League, we got uh, relegated owing to our financial irregularities. <laughs> Yeah. You're on a bit of regular. And, 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 a Christmas party and, turning up. And I don't know what it is, but ever since, I'm attracted to unusual chairmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly seems like it. Did you, did you ever well, get... So he's been arrested twice then? Oh, yeah, he got arrested five times after that. <laughs> he'd done a bigger job every time. <laughs> he did. Yeah, it, unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I tell you what, if he was with <laughs> us now, it'd be the greatest company ever.
Yeah. Real greatest con man I've ever met in my life. <laughs> really? He's taking brilliant. all our details. But now. really good, 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 uh, good, laugh. good company, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Horrendous criminal, but what a laugh. Um, do you deal with any shady characters in football, Jim? Or was it a bit more um, Not as shady as that. No, was, <laughs> the more I went on, the more professional it got, the more money you're into, the less yeah. that happens. But, yeah, yeah they're, they're out, they are out there, and you hear of them, don't you? But not that that's double shady, that. <laughs> making, out that's having a, making out you're having a do, and then um, getting done with that. Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah, don't and, get bigger than that. And then you went on to Barnet. Yeah, Barnet. Stan, I'd, Stan I'd, Flashman. <laughs> Well, no, not not the first five years it oh, wasn't it. it. I, I didn't. Um, uh, Stan weren't about then. The first five years it burned, it was really hard work. Oh, because, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, because... Well, also, uh, was it Stan that kept on sacking you and then reinstating you? He did later on when yeah. I went back, but I'd gone to a couple of clubs um, uh, Before th- thereafter, then. yeah. I'd gone to Maidstone and then... Uh, oh, I've got to tell you what happened at Maidstone, apart from getting the sack, of course. <laughs> Go on. Was it Maystone? I was in the office and the phone went and I picked it up. Your mate. Buzzer! Harry Redknapp here, Bournemouth. Mark <laughs> Newson. I went, oh, what a player, That's Harry. Amazing, yeah. I said he can play, hit the back like Bobby Moore. Majestic, brings it out, passes it. Or he can play centre midfield like Brian Robson. Wins it, passes it, bombs by the front people, scores goals. Under a grand, Harry. <laughs> You just selling him? No, I'm telling him this, right? So he going under a grand. He said that's funny, Bass. He said I just put the phone down to John Young, who's in charge of registrations at the FA, and he tells me you haven't even got him signed on. <laughs> so I said, don't be a flash fucker with me, Harry. <laughs> I said, we, we at Maidstone United don't believe in paying tax. <laughs> So all our... No, it was before that happened, this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I said, we <clears throat> sign our players on non-contract, but they sign a blank blue contract. So when flash people like you come, you've got to give me seven days' notice. I get that contract out of the drawer. I fill in all the blanks. <laughs> I send it off to the FA, and you'll owe me under a grand red nap. <laughs> So then Harry goes, Baz, this is a courtesy call. When you was out to lunch with your chairman yesterday, Mark Newson come into your office. And he said and he went into your drawer. Oh. And he's bought me this blank contract with his signature on it. And I'm filling in the blanks. <laughs> and I'm sending it off to the FA. And by the same sounds of it, it saved me 100 grand. <laughs> I went, you tea leaf red nap, you unethical <laughs> bastard red nap, you piece of shit red nap, I'll blow your kneecaps off! <laughs> I was angry. <laughs> hey, next time, next time I see Harry red nap, was it Ascot? Was gone. He gave me a hundred to one winner and we've been the best of mates ever since. <laughs> Brilliant. True story. Uh, really, yeah, I can imagine it. Unbelievable true story. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, Mark Newson, I played at Gravesend with him. Yeah. Towards the back end of his career, I know exactly the player you want to play, yeah. well, and he was a player. He kept on dropping Jim, a blue what, paper. Yeah. Jim, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what happened, Pleaty was at Tottenham. Right. And he fancied Newson. So, we had to, he couldn't play in those days, so we had to cancel his contract, yeah. right, and he signed a new one so that he could play for Tottenham in two games. Now, Harry was very, very cute, and he heard about this and sent his buddy, Stuart, um, who worked for him for years, centre-half, uh, to watch him. And, of course, he... Uh, so they know. And in, they know Bill Williams, who, who I took over from, got on a jet and went to South Africa. So he told Harry as well about it. So... The combination of them, they was cute. We'd all yeah, do yeah. it. I'd, I'd have done it yeah, to anybody yeah, if I could. Yeah, yeah. They're cute and they got it and they got into Noose and all that. I don't really? blame Noose. Yeah. So, but but Jim, I'd, I told Jim Thompson, I said, look, you can't get him off a contract. No, no, they've got to give us seven days' notice. They're, they're all right. Get him to sign that blue. We're all right. Well, we weren't all right. No, of course, yeah. then, then when I didn't get anywhere with Harry, 
after threatening to blow his legs off. <laughs> <laughs> Jim tried, but Jim got nowhere. Did Harry you, stuck before, out. Before he gave you the under to one shot, uh, and did he? Did you speak to him before that? Then did you have a row with him when you saw him? Yeah, as soon as I got there, I went <laughs> you. He said, "Before you start, I've got under to one." I went, "Yeah." <laughs> no, we was in a box. He, he, he was guest to Stan Flashman. We had a box at Royal Ascot. We had it every year, and we, yeah, yeah. every time I see Harry now, I see him about a month ago, and we, we always talk about it because it was brilliant. You know, yeah. it was brilliant. Ball, he was there, and it, it was it was just a fun time yeah. for footballers, managers, or players, and <laughs> getting together. And, 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 and so, did you get on with Stan Flashman then? Because I've, I've got down there that he sat, he sacked you thirty seven times. Yeah, so he, he did. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he was one of those interfering chairmen. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to I used to go round his house every Friday to get paid, and if he used to say, "What's the team tomorrow, Baz?" and I used to tell him. He didn't pay me because he said, I'll sack you tomorrow. I'm not paying you. He said, with that team, you've got no chance. And he used to phone the players up, you know, Frank, yeah, yeah. Murphy, Murphy, don't bother turning up tomorrow, you know. <laughs> so I'd go back to the office Friday afternoon. I'd get a phone call from Frank uh, Frank Murphy and he'd go, Baz, I've just had the chair, chairman on telling me not to, not to turn up. I said, yeah, Frank, that's because I told him he was in the team. Um, <clears throat> he said, well, he's told me not... Not to turn up, otherwise I'll find myself hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I said, don't Frank, need, don't take the notice yeah. of him. He's threatened to put me, Stan, threatened to put me in the cement and the bridges around the M25 at the time. <laughs> he, 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 unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Do you still get on with him like Cheeseman? Do you yeah, like I, I like Stan. He, he, <laughs> but, he, but, no, did, I did. He, did you he, say in your book, though, there's only one thing wrong with Stan, the man is a complete and utter shit? Oh yeah, I, I, called him, <laughs> I called him that to his face. Yeah. And all. Oh, okay. Listen, he, he he was another rogue. Yeah, he, yeah. I mean, he. Um, it's like cowboy he, builders. We, in in the end, it Barnet, it, it it was terrible. In yeah. in the end, he he stayed at home. Nobody got any money. Nobody got any money yeah. for 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 like eight weeks, two months, and again, I phoned Bestie up and I. <laughs> no, what have no, you got on him? No, 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 no. And, I mean, it's unbelievable. I'll I, I tell you why he done no it. I wonder he ran out of money. But he, but he <laughs> come. <laughs> just took but he money. come. G Jim, I had testimony against Tottenham, and and uh, and he come filled the house. But all my proceeds went to the players and their families. They deserved it, mate. Lovely, yeah. They, yeah, were, yeah. they was brilliant. But I couldn't have done that without Bestie yeah. and Tottenham. In all fairness, mm. but Stan was he. We wouldn't have got in the league without Stan. Yeah. Because he paid the money. Yeah. He not only paid the money, we had the best coach, we stayed at the best hotels. He treated us, he allowed me to treat the players as if they was Arsenal players or Tottenham players. Yeah. yeah. And and you, Jim will tell you as a player, if you're treated right, you want to go and perform. Yeah. And we right, performed yeah. and that's why we got three promotions. It was brilliant. He was brilliant. Oh, yeah. So yeah. although he's a pain of an, in the ass, a shit, <laughs> an unbelievable guy. But since, since he died and gone, God bless him, I've become a pensioner and I went to get me pension, got a letter back saying, between this year and that year, which was seven years, you wasn't in work. <laughs> so you can't, I've never been out of work in my life. <laughs> Jim, this is my 56 pre-season starting as a player, a manager or a director of football. I've never ever been out of work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when they this come, luckily enough, my missus keeps all my waist slips from uh, yeah. up in the loft. Yeah. So I had to go up in the loft or she. So he did. hasn't obviously put them through, she, has he? No, no. He'd stop tax and national insurance off of me and hadn't paid the inland revenue. <laughs> now, it's a laugh, and no, and I've, I've got all the proof yeah. that they were stopped at me, so I got my right pension. Yeah, yeah. But imagine yeah. all the people that was at Barnet in the time. Oh, I, yeah. I, I was at Barnet like 14, 15 years. Imagine when they become my age and go, yeah. they'll have the same problem and as me, like that, yeah. and, and they won't have the way slips to prove that the money was taken out of it. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> no, like like I say, I'm attracted to these uh, likeable rogues. Have you threatened to sack you 37 times? Have, you, have your managers ever threatened to sack you? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. For what? Um, well, I did get sacked, didn't I? Who, by? Um, I can't mention it on here. Who got but, sacked? Yeah, I got sacked. Who sacked you? I'm sure Baz has uh, mentioned it. I remember one game when um, I, I was away at QPR 
and I always remember this. And um, coming at half time, and I didn't have such a good game. And I've hit this shot from about 35 yards. I hit the post. And he's coming around, he does what he does. He picks every individual player out. He's like, absolutely, he blew a gasket. And when Baz blows a gasket, believe me, it's a fucking gasket. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and he goes, you ain't hit a fucking good shot since the old king died. And I'm sitting there like that, Dan. <laughs> Baz, because I always had something to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always had to say something. I went, but this time I was thinking, shall I? I'm going <laughs> to clip one. And I went, Baz, I hit the post from 30 yards. He said, exactly, it didn't go fucking in, did it? I went like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I let it go. He won't remember that, but I can honestly tell you that's exactly how it went. And then he went round and he's off me and onto someone else. I'm like, hey, thank fuck for that. I'm away of it, but that's exactly how it was. Um, Ed, have you got the a quiz? You got the old who said what quiz for Barry? Yeah, yeah. I got a quiz. Yeah, so basically, this is a lot of quotes from uh, football managers, and you've got to guess who said it. I get anyone okay, can, can chip in. Oh, yeah, 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 can chip in. Um, so who said? I was asked if I thought I was the right man for the job, and I said, no, I think they should have given it to George Graham because I'm useless. And that is either Stuart Pearce, Glenn Roder, Dave Bassett, or Gordon Strachan. I'll go Bassett. That's the kind of thing you'd say, I reckon. Bassett? Got any ideas? No. Gordon Strachan. Gordon Strachan. That's it. Did you know that? Was it a guess? No, I guess. Yeah, I, thought, I felt like you, you looked into my soul and got the answer. <laughs> um, anyone who's thinking of applying for the Scotland job in the next eight or nine years should get themselves checked out by about 15 psychiatrists. Was that Martin O'Neill, Walter Smith, Sir Alex Ferguson or Paul Lambert? I would say um, Martin O'Neill. Sir Alex. Alex Ferguson. It was Martin O'Neill. I wasn't. Hey! It's something like he would no say. One. It's a bit off the cuff, isn't it? I tried to throw. I was throwing in Scottish. Is Martin O'Neill Scottish? No, in. Is that Irish? Irish? Yeah, I was trying to throw no, in the no, Scottish yeah. managers. You didn't fall for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if we win, hopefully we'll be, be able to buy some new radiators because we're freezing our bollocks off down the training ground. Is that Ian Holloway, Martin Allen, Jockey Scott, or Ian Dowie? Holloway. I'd go Martin Allen, ball, um, Bulldog, yeah. Right your <laughs> yeah, yeah. Martin Allen. It was Martin Allen. Yeah. <laughs> I know Martin Allen. That's exactly yeah. saying what he would say. What, what club would he have been, been at then? Barnet. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've just been telling you for an hour, <laughs> Barnet ain't got no money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, oh, I know what is around the corner. I just don't know where the corner is. Is that Kevin Keegan, Alan Pardew... Rude Hollett or John Carver? I know, I'd say Keegan. Timmy, I forget the first ones by the time it gets to the fourth option. So John Carver. Just, do you have to give us so many fucking options? Well, yeah, sorry, yeah. but it's multiple choice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, John Carver. We'll just give you two, it's easy. Go or on just then. one, then it's Who's the it? answer, isn't it? It's Keegan. Yes, yeah. I'm on fire, yeah. I'm doing well, yeah. Um, just trying to show off because It's because I get into the mind of him, see? He doesn't know a goal line from a close line. Was that David Seaman, Harry Redknapp, Barry Fry? Or Ooh. Cookie Coleman. <laughs> I would say Bez. I think you've got, you've got to put a Barry Fry one in, seeing as he's in. Yeah, yeah, so Barry Fry. Was, who did you say that to? Basically, I've nailed Talking all five. Talking about David Sullivan, I was completely wrong, and I got the sack for that as well. <laughs> 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 no, but they've done brilliant. <clears throat> Sullivan, Gold, Brady, West Ham, your old club, Jim. Mm. They have done wonderful. Mm. They have. They really have. You, you, you know, to take that over and... Invest a hundred million where yeah. everybody in the world thought it was dead money and throwing it down no, the drain course, from to turn it round. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Mm. So, congratulations to mm. all of them. And I don't think they got the credit for the 17 years they had at Birmingham because they put Birmingham on the map. Mm. Yeah. And Birmingham City supporters, of which I am one, of real big blue nose, have wanted them out in the end. And they've got yeah. to be careful what they wish for because they've been an absolute disaster ever since and in turmoil. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Mm. Well, we can't use the other quote because you've already told us how you were going to blow Harry Redknapp's oh. fucking legs off. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the... Oh, yeah. oh no, we have, got, we have got this. Who said this about you? Um, when you speak to Barry Fry, it's like completing a 1,000-piece jigsaw. Who said that? Oh, I ain't got clue. It's quite a complex... Brian Moore. I don't know who that is. But Brian Moore? Brian Moore. Is it commentator? Commentator. Moore. Moore? 
Two R's? No, Bri- Bri- Brian Moore. 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 No, Moore. Brian Moore. Would not Moore. Do. It's not like a cow. It's yeah, like Moore. Moore. M-O-R-E. You'd be like, oh, I want more of them. Yeah, but the name Bobby. You know Bobby, you know Bobby Moore? Oh. Oh, oh, Bobby yeah, Moore. Good point. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Moore. Yeah. Moore. Oh, Moore. Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore lifts <laughs> the Jules Ramey. There's only one. The Bobby Moore stand. Um... Where are we, Rob? I can't even argue back to it because as oh, soon as you said, you, have you heard of Bobby Moore? I was like, oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, I've got that one. Um, do you know on YouTube, there's, you know the documentary you did, um, well, there's a bit of swearing in it. You know the doc- I've done a few yeah. documentaries. Yeah, but do you know on YouTube they've clipped together every swear oh, word that yes. you did in that one, really <laughs> one episode? That would you, would you like Would you like to hear it? Or it's twenty seconds long. I'm 20 sure our viewers, <laughs> our, our viewers, our <laughs> viewers, our our listeners. listeners. It's twenty seconds. It's all the little bits that you did like throughout the hour. Oh, hang on a second. Here so you never heard me speak once? No, 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 <laughs> no. This has been editing down. This is oh, not right. what went out on telly. This is just the edited version. Gentlemen, I told you to start this. I told you to start this program. My lack of vocabulary. You've now had that word anyway. That is. Oh, it was that poetic. It was beautiful by the wow. end. Yeah, it's, it's like a song. It's like a, song, it? so it's well like a Christmas song. number one. What song was that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, he was at South End as well. I love South End. Enjoy it at South End. Eight months. Same. And then what was the Ricky Otto in Italy story? Was he, he got? He got uh, didn't the um, Ricky Otto wound up um, wound up the home fans so much? He only got his head smashed in by a no, local kind no, of hammer. No. Is, that, is that wrong? Is that... Know, it was funny, football? but it weren't funny at the time. Oh right. We we oh. we went to uh, Italy and and we won the game. We won all our games in Italy. It was brilliant, but. Their supporters was mad, yeah, and their players was mad. So when we come off the field and walk back, you walk downstairs along a cor- corridor and walk upstairs, and <clears throat> there's all doors along there. And as we're walking along there, one of their players come out the boot room with a hammer to hit Ricky on the head with it, yeah. and Alzi. David Owls got hold of his arm, twisted it round his back, and threw him back in the kit room. <clears throat> but that could have been yeah. really yeah. dangerous. Oh, that's crazy, hammer, yeah. A smashing. actual hammer. So, this was on the Wednesday. We <laughs> found it roots all, right? Yeah. On the Saturday. So, as the players run out, and Ricky runs out, David Owl jumps from the dugout with this giant inflatable hammer <laughs> to smash him on the head and he brought the ass down yeah. but, but, but Jim will tell you that that's football people oh Fantastic. yeah yeah brilliant yeah. Oh, that, that. Yeah, we, we, we had a million laughs on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, imagine that what's the most hostile hey, ground but, it, but when you was no, there it oh it's awful yeah. Yeah. It just oh, yeah, yeah. oh god yeah. ridiculous yeah yeah cool awful and the most hostile ground I played at yeah Millwall would normally get some. Oh, Millwall back in the day. The yeah. old den, well, when I was a kid, the old den was... Oh, yeah, oh, evil. Didn't yeah. get as... I yeah, used that to go was... there because two, two of my ex-teammates at Man United, Eamon Dunphy and Hugh Curran, mm. both played for Millwall. So I used to go to the... Uh, when I didn't yeah. have a game and when I was in London, I, I went to see him on a Tuesday night. Yeah, and, it was... Oh, the yeah. abuse I got. And I went, hey... I'm supporting yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Was... I used to live with Eamon Dumpy and who he, who he Carmen mean... was across the road. And... But oh, I remember walking through, and even back then, my dad was taking me, and even yeah. he went, "Don't fan." I was only like twelve <laughs> foot, and he went, "That's a bit much over there." Like, yeah, it's a bit full on. But where, where's that in the old bowling ground? That was that was heavy back yeah, in the day. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, that was. Uh, do you know what I mean? Even yeah. when I played, there was like some serious comments coming no, out of the ground. Was, I knew yeah. I was like, yeah. "Blimey, yeah. it's like ruthless mm. down there." But that Birmingham was great. Um, but even some of the Northern clubs. I played at Hull. Believe me, they got some serious following yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah. That was an unbelievable stone. When that got rocking, that was unbelievable. So yeah. played at some real hostile places. What was the people like the ground? The fans. Yeah, it was great. Good. I had a great rapport with the fans. As soon yeah, as I went did. there, they loved it. I loved Still the rapport doing. with the fans. Um, it was. F- it's where I started really. My career took off there. So yeah, it was, it did. It... Always look back, and I, hit, I hit the ground running. If you remember, I did, going back to my career there, I, 
I struggled for the first three or four months. I didn't play that well. Yeah. And Baz stuck with me, and all of a sudden I scored one goal, and it sort of sparked yeah, me. Yeah. Oh, Before really? I knew it, I was yeah. just. Uh, to be he, fair, he, he I scored wasn't, some. Well, when he started off, he was inconsistent. He'd do some good things in the yeah. game and not so good game. Mm. But yeah, the yeah. longer we kept that. faith with him, he got more and more and more consistent. Yeah. Yeah, and before it, yeah. we went out, we'd say, Jimmy Bellard's man of the match today and he ain't kicked a ball yet. Really? And that was only in a kickabout. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because he grew in confidence. And that's exactly the players, that's the the thing players thing loved him. The players give him the ball because mm. they knew you know, he'd get him the bonus, he'd, he'd make things happen. Yeah. He could was, affect a game. Flinny Jimmy could affect a game. No, no, no Flinny weren't there. Um, Fenny, we had Neil Fenn, remember Neil Fenn? Yeah, centre forward. He was uh, what about a, um, Couldn't run, but could Could not run, up. but he had a serious touch. Oh, yeah. um, what about shit bomb? What's his name? Jamie Ann yeah. weren't there. No, you weren't no, there, no. I'm just no, trying to think. Any, play, any people you've mentioned there. on the Dean podcast? Dean Hooper. I told you some stories. Remember Dean Hooper? I still speak to Dean Hooper. He's another one. Should have done better in his career. Really? Had ability. Um, didn't you get caught surfing on the roof of a taxi? That was at um, Wigan. That was <laughs> so at Wigan. I yeah, yeah, that. I got stitched up. It wasn't going fast. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't going fast. That was on a night out. You know, that is getting carried away. <laughs> what, what happened? Uh, just on a night out and taxi driver, there was four in there. So I went, oh, don't worry, I'll get on the roof. Right? Oh. Be all right. I only jumped yeah. on it. He drove up a little, and that was that. And before you know it, it's in the press. You've oh, gone right, down the yeah. M25, 80 mile an hour on the route no. rack. Well, no, it won't really like that. Um, right, Ian, you've got a Jimmy on Jimmy uh, new oh, feature. Yeah, yeah. We've got. Um, right, so, so yeah, this is. What is this? You've hit me. I don't know what's going this on. Go on, I like it like this. About what you wrote in your autobiography. <laughs> oh right, okay. Did you write it or? Um, obviously, I didn't write my own book. I I had a ghost. <laughs> obviously. obviously, I had a ghost. Obviously, I didn't actually write. And my basically, book. I spoke into a dictaphone. Yeah, yeah, but that's how, really? no, you're saying it. They're not making. Yeah. But how many times no. did you meet up with him? <laughs> obviously, well, I this is what I was going to say. Book. I met up with him in some random places, as in like fishing, golf, on a train, in a restaurant. Um, so it's just like, oh, well, yeah, it's crazy then, in a restaurant. No, 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 no. And there was some other. St- I was going to go, but I couldn't really pub? mention some of them. You but yeah, in a pub, brothels? Um, just brothels. No brothels. <laughs> I don't go to brothels. <laughs> no <Anymore>. need. <laughs> <laughs> no need. That's right, Baz. Tell no need. Um, <laughs> but go on, go on. Hit right. me with it. So, what was the total cost in fines due to fire extinguisher-related incidents at Fulham? Uh, um, that would have reached. <laughs> was it like four or five grand? Well, no, I've got here yeah, around five hundred pounds. Oh, was it really? I done well then. <laughs> That's not too bad. Because, no, what I used to do is <laughs> <deserve> more. <laughs> so like, so we had a load of like foreign kids come and like sign for us. So what yeah. I thought just to be the icebreaker, you know. So they thought <laughs> they felt at home. I thought spraying with a fire extinguisher because it, 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 it sounds shit now, doesn't Welcome. it? Welcome. But when Welcome. you go, oh, she's going here, all right, mate. We could do it here. We're all right here. We're like easy, and they're going oh, dripping. But half of it, some of it, I won't water it. It's foam, will it? Oh god! And like you get, so yeah, I do that, thinking it was funny at the time. It's brilliant, but now nah, yeah, not so funny. Yeah. It's, it's in the moment, isn't it? It's in the moment. When it's in the moment, it's yeah, great. It's isn't it? Yeah. Like, as soon as you come out the gaffer's off, it's fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go on. Quid. Go on. Um, whose car did you fill up with water? That is TJ Monker's. That is full, like dustbin lid, dustbin full. Would he leave his sunroof open? Yeah, he come in. He's only a young boy. And he's Tw- <laughs> 21. What got a new contract. It's Peugeot 306. He's come in. He's drove in, but he's give it music loud and we all fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I parked it. A, he had a better car than a lot of the first team boys. We're like not having that. So he's gone and got changed. I was injured. I'm thinking worst thing ever. I'm injured. So you fucked all your gears yeah, in a yeah. change. I can do what I want now. Yeah. It's like so. I filled it up, boshed it. That don't look enough. Another one, boshed it. Another one, three later. But what well, I didn't know the fucking CCTV cams on me, <laughs> and this boy could have a tear up. So he's, he's in the office. He comes out of Ibury. He's in his old man. I wonder. Oh, this family's in Ibury. So I'm looking there, and he's going. I oh, know it's you, Jim. I'm like, for fuck. So he wanted to bash me up, didn't he? Oh, did he? But now I'm best mates with him. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you sort mates. it then? Did you Just, pay for it? Just um, give him a few quid, did I? I was earning a few quid. Yeah, geez, sorry, mate. Sorry. Here's the money. Yeah, oh, it's true. Yes, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Or story, just a bit of roof. <laughs> but that, that's it. Is that, was that the car done? It fucked it up a bit. Yeah, fucked it up a bit. Drove home with flippers. Go on. <laughs> um, who was oh, the greatest good. stretcher in the history of the game? Oh, fucking hell. Um, 
foreign boy. We yeah. signed him at Fulham. Um, he played at Liverpool. Great player. Fantastic. One of the best. What's his name? Danny Murphy? No. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Are you talking oh, Danny Murphy? One. No, no. No, you're I was talking Yari Lippmann? Yeah, yeah. Yari really? yeah. 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 Lippmann. Right, let me tell you about this player. <laughs> Roy Hodgson would be telling you the team, like, we're in the room and Yari would be stretching. Be like, Yari, what are you doing, mate? We're not outside yet, and he stretch. He stretches like there was. He does kids' autographs. And he's stretching. <laughs> <laughs> like he stretches. I swear, he's he must be the most nimble bloke ever. <laughs> he must still eat his he's own toenails. Stretching. Yeah, always <laughs> stretching. Like, uh, like he see his own toenails. Uh, when it's like, how you long don't did you used to stretch for? Did you? I like hardly stretch? stretch. That's probably why I noticed it. <laughs> he probably does my stretching for me, but he stretched like. But he was. <laughs> He was a player. Yeah. He was a so serious stretchy. player. Um, so nimble. Um, this one, what was the name of the kit man at Wigan? His name was... Well, we had two. We had Fred and Joe. Yeah, yeah, I, um, Joe. I'll tell you a good story about Joe, right? He's behind me on the aeroplane. The chairman took us away. We went up and the chairman took us to Barbados. Yeah. Brilliant he was. He's he was wicked. There, Dave Whelan, yeah. yeah he's, he's got his own place out there. He used to play. And Joe Kitman is behind me. 75 years of age. <laughs> Oh, and God. he's snoring. Yeah. And the boy's like, Jim, shut him up. He's doing me head in. <laughs> so I've looked like, but his mouth's like, <laughs> closing and opening. So I go straight there. I've got a Malteser, in I? So they go, Jim, don't like that. So as he opens his mouth, I go, wallet! <laughs> throw it straight down there. He's choked. <laughs> like that. He shouts at Big Northern. He went, I've got fucking angina. That's dangerous. I was like, cross I thought, where have you got a vagina? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck he was on about. But yeah, oh, he, yeah, he was fuming, he was. He was fuming. And all the boys were like, Jim, you shouldn't have done that. But it was one of them things. Yeah. It's great at the time, but I could have yeah, killed yeah. him. Yeah. He yeah, went straight no, down. No. Like, Maltesers ain't small. Come at him the next uh, day, have a big yeah, inflatable oh, Maltese. Oh, also, oh, when, so when you went to Dave Whelan's place in Barbados, yeah. wasn't Dave Whelan too pissed to sit down? Yeah, well, he, he had this long... His place was like, it's worth millions and millions of pounds. And he had um, this long table. Like, he had all the directors and all the stuff at that and all the players this end. Yeah. And we was all having a drink and he said, boys, listen, there's no rules tonight. I want you to come and enjoy yourselves at our place. And it was like, brilliant. It was lovely. And we was all having a wine. It was all having a good time. Dave was like having a few drinks. You see him getting redder and redder in the face. He's obviously <laughs> had a few drinks. He wasn't legless, but he's had a few. And he just collapsed off, fell off the chair. <laughs> but the directors had gone to pick him up. And he went, fucking leave me alone. Like that. And he's pushed all the directors away. He's tried to get up. He's gone over again. <laughs> But he wouldn't let anyone pick him up. And his wife's there, and she went, leave him. I've been here before, leave him. But that's what a man he was. Proper hard northerner. Wouldn't let anyone else pick him up. And all the boys were like, oh, you know, chairman's lost his head here. We're like, stay away from him. But yeah, he was a proper man, Dave, when he was quality. And, and on that trip, didn't Dave Hamilton hit a turtle? Uh, this, oh, I'm right. looking forward to this. <laughs> This one's a tad bit longer, but what happened was that in Barbados. This was classic. This is like one of my favourite stories because it cracks me up. And you really got to imagine being there. So there was like, we had like, <laughs> we had some Scottish players, this. like some real strong players. Lee McCullough being one of them, and he was probably the strongest player I've ever played with in all my life. And there was this um, speedboat that had a ring donut on the end of it. Yeah. So us as being youngsters, we'd go on there and we'd say to the driver, go fast. But what would happen if you hit a wave in whatever direction you go, you f it flips you off. Yeah. So. Gradually, you get tossed off, basically, like thrown off this thing. Not tossed off, that's saying dodge it. But you get launched yeah. off. And if you're the last to go, you're literally through the air, I'd say, 40 metre through the air. So you'd hit the water, and believe me, it hurts, right? Yeah. So Dave Hamilton, he was like the scout at that point, like middle-aged man, but thought he was James Bond. <laughs> thought, thought he could do everything. Every morning he's skiing, looking out, and the boys are like, who's he think he is? Like, one leg. So I thought, I thought, we'll get him on here, eh? Come, we'll get him on here. Let's just see, let's see if he can handle this. But I said to the driver, I said, I want to go really fast. Like, the fastest you've ever been, right? <laughs> so I'm on the end, what goes off first? I sort of fall off. I know what's coming. Like, oh, I'm off. Gary Till's off, Lee McCulloch's off 30 yards. Well, Dave Alton's hit this wave. I swear <laughs> on my life, he's through the air like Bruce Willis. He's, he's, but you can hear him go, oh, like he's hit the water head first, right? And oh you, hit, God, you hit water, yeah. it's like it in pavement, right? Oh he's gone whack, he's hit it that hard, he ain't even got wet. He's on top of it, <laughs> like that. <laughs> He's lifted up, his nose is round his ear hole, and he's gone, I swear I've hit a fucking turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gone like that, he 
he's got to start on a surf. He's nose round oh, here. Oh, dear. But to top it all off, he's got back in the boat as well. And as he's trying to get off, he forgot how deep it was. So he went under again. He's like, <laughs> and it's all blood everywhere. Oh, I was crying. It was so funny. But that was actually as wicked it was. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Oh, that's that. Got that's got to be one of the best stories yeah, I've ever heard. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. meant like he's, he's punched one. No, no, because no, he, he hit the water that hard, like... he actually thought, <laughs> I'll be a turtle. He actually thought he hit a turtle, but it's obviously the water, so like... Um, how many games <laughs> had you played consecutive, uh, consecutively before you were dropped by Paul Jewell for the away match at Chelsea? 174, 178. Wow. 123? No, it's more than that. No, <laughs> what's wrong? Where'd what? you get that from, Joel? No, no, the, your book. <laughs> your book, yeah. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you put it really? in your book. No, because that's. Have to do it. Might re- be it's quite loud in brothels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's under seventy. But next podcast, I'll make sure I get the right um, yeah. the right figure. Get a new book out. I was well um, confident on that then book. as well. No, I haven't got the a lot jungle. else to... The jungle years? There might be a magic back section sponge, going on. Magic sponge years. <laughs> um, what about who put deep heat in your underpants? Grant McCann. Um, Grant Ledbetter? No. Was it not? Michael... Flynn. Flynny. Brown. Oh, fuck <laughs> yeah. No, well, that was... How many times has that no, happened? Four, four times. times. <laughs> no, <there was. laughs> four times. That is the... Do you remember Simon Ray? Do you remember yeah. that one? Well, Simon Ray. <coughs> God, he had some... Do you remember <laughs> you massive balls? <laughs> well, tell him, tell him, Baz. We, we had this centre-half plant rush. He's a big, inch fella. But he, he used to have to get his bollocks drained. Yeah. Because he, had, <laughs> no, no. he had the biggest what bollocks I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. My missus used to come and watch. Do you watch. mean like a flannel? Like, um, no, no, no. Like, like, what happened? Excess fluid gets on. Oh, no, right. He told her. Rob knows There was stuff. fluid right. coming on his bollocks. It was all right. He had it dealt with. Doctors used to But every six months, used to get, get them drained. My missus used to come and watch, right? And where sometimes you get wet because of the pitch and all that, his bollocks. <laughs> all the women used to go, what Wee. the fuck <laughs> are they? <laughs> I swear we had the most wives no, coming to our game yeah. ever. Just get a freebie. Look towards the end of his six <laughs> months when he's needing a drink. Lovely lad. Lovely yeah, lovely lad. lad. Lovely. But once they got me, Jason Lee, they got me, I always remember this, they got me in the room and I was always playing pranks and they got me bad yeah, yeah. one time. I used to love me hair. I still love me hair. <laughs> Shaved up straight up the middle, didn't they? Oh, did they? Oh, absolutely ruined me, Simon Ray. So I thought, how can I get him back? I chopped his brand new Armani suit up. But that... <laughs> That, that evening, he, he, didn't, he didn't think that was funny at all. <laughs> no, he wanted to kill me. Yeah, he's like, his suits don't hey, grow back. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> and he's a big six foot three oh, heavyweight he champion he in the world. Would, he would Chasing Jim around, never caught him. <laughs> he, he would have hit me. <laughs> but that night was um, player of the year, dude. I've had to wear a cap while I was all embarrassed. <laughs> that, was yeah, that, was, yeah, that was another story. No, yeah, great. yeah, it was well, wicked. It says time. here that you got your own back with a couple of Ralgate. Ralgex. Rel- What's Ralgex? So that's basically a deep heat rub. Oh, right. But yeah, I, I took it on one further. I used to, um, you know the old aftershave bottles? Yeah. Pour a bit out and piss in them. <laughs> so that wow. then they're spraying it on their self and I'm like, nice, nice, is it? <laughs> Sticking them my piss all, mum. Like, I've done him like a kipper. But yeah, Ralgex... <laughs> <laughs> Railjet's in the toothpaste is the one though. Yeah. It's all right putting Railjet up your nuts and all that. You watch someone put Railjet's on their lips and in their gums. Oh. Oh. That mate, you see a man's face change. I don't, <laughs> I don't care how big you are. Life. You rub Railjet's in your gums, you know about it. <laughs> Brilliant. That's a classic. Have, have, you, have you ever had to sort out like massive arguments between players with like stuff like that, or do you just no, don't get, on with, get it? on with it? Really? Just I the... think it's great. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I think it's, it's all good for team spirit yeah, yeah. because although they're annoyed and want to knock lumps out of each other mm. at a time, that they laugh about it for months and months yeah, after, yeah. and years and years after, they do. I've got to say, like, all that stuff that I've done and other players were doing, I've never once seen a full blast terror come out of that. Oh, so really? it's, all, no, it's always no, managed between yeah, players yeah, 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 and is, sort of gone, is, look, yeah. you're over the mountain. And as soon yeah, as you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. sort of, so it's, if it's managed by the players, it's, it's fine. It is. That's nice, Sam. Any more Jimmy on Jimmy? Is that the end of Jimmy? No, no, Jimmy? It's good. It's a good. I think it's a good new thing. Pizza, Thank you. Yeah. Brilliant. No. I've yeah. done my bollocks here in the first episode. I've got yeah. no more next week. <laughs> How do, how do you keep players motivated when they're not playing? Like, what do you do? Like, you know, the, the, that's the most difficult job yeah. of any manager. The eleven, it's simple. They're all playing. They all want to play. The ones that are on the bench are reasonably happy, but the ones that ain't even in the squad of eighteen, mm. it's yeah. absolutely unbelievable now yeah. and and it's difficult because 
you want to be positive in all the games, and if you've got a few ne- you, you fours negative, because you ain't playing. Yeah. So if it was me, I wouldn't have you anywhere near the dressing room. Yeah. yeah. Some managers are different, yeah. and they want them, Everyone but it's is. no good having you sat there sulking, mm-hmm. because the look, if you're not in. I know that you're wishing that we have a nightmare game anyway. We lose 4-0 yeah. and you 4-0 back yeah, in. Yeah. I don't need that around. Just you don't as a player. Yeah, and, 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 46 no, matches, uh, you reckon everyone's getting rotated a fair bit, you would have thought. all depends what sort of squad you've got, doesn't it? Well, it, injury, it, it, and it all depends what sort of form you're in. Mm. Mm. You know, if, you, if you're winning, uh, I'm a great believer in why change it anyway. Mm. Mm. You know. um, would you like to be a Premier League manager now? Now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, not <laughs> off. <laughs> Even for a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obscene money, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no. Crazy, isn't it? Well, no, on the you know, subject of managers, um, obviously you've to- spoken about Harry Redknapp and your, uh, yeah. your argument with him. But um, Sam Allardyce, you know, England manager now. Did yeah, you, I know, you know Sam well? very well. Yeah. Very, very well. I, I um, <clears throat> picked his... Uh, I witched together when he was at Notts County. He, um, he won the league earliest ever when he was manager in Notts yeah. County. Um, when he was at uh, Blackpool, I think I got him the sack. I think we beat him 6-1 <laughs> and uh, what have you. But Sam's always been like 10 years ahead of his time in as much as fitness-wise. Yeah, he's really into it. He's really into all this yeah. thing and he, he, and he had it miles before anybody else. I don't think he gets the um, credit for that sometimes. No, he doesn't. They just sort of see this big no, sort no. of, yeah, you yeah. know, tough... He's very, thing. very thorough, Sam. Yeah. Very, very mm. so- thorough. And if you talk to his players that's played for him, they love him. Yeah. Because yeah. He, he makes them feel good. He, and, he, what, he, you know, he's... Uh, he's um, <clears throat> well-liked amongst the players. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And what about Alan Pardew? Jimmy's a big fan of Alan Pardew's uh, <laughs> approach. Uh, Pards, I've had a couple of dealings with uh, Alan Pardew and they've always been OK. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Less said than that, really. <laughs> They've always been absolutely satisfactory, so it's uh, good I to know. I would say satisfactory. <laughs> okay. Say okay. Manageable. <laughs> and about, um, and uh, Alex Ferguson, do you know... Brilliant. Him? Brilliant. Yeah. Alex Ferguson is the greatest manager that's ever been, in mm. my opinion. He's um, he's always first at the training ground, seven o'clock, half seven. He's always last to leave. He knows everybody's name, all the young kids that yeah. he's got there in the youth team. He knows their parents' names. He knows all the staff's names. Alex makes you feel important. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and And he's different class and he does his job. Uh, like nobody else. Yeah, I think he's, you know, in a few years' time, everyone looks back what he's done, he's just going to be. No, it's, it's, I it's happening now, isn't it? Yeah, already. I think they've realised what they're missing. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. that brings us sort of towards the end of the episode. And this is sort of the yeah. team talk section that we do. This is a feature we do every well, one week. Thing, one thing, Asa, this is no. me asking quite, <laughs> quite an in, in, well, a normal question. What, um, <laughs> I'm going in the normal one. Usually I'm mental, it's not like mental, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but what, so what. What's the aim for Peterborough this season? Because you're in the playoffs, sort yeah. of places that make it. Yeah. Yeah. Days, uh, our, our aim is to get in the championship. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you, you know, for all sorts of reasons, um, main one, money. If, <laughs> if you get in the championship, it's worth 6.8 million wow. before you kick a ball. Mm. But you, not only that, if you play Leeds, you get 5,000 away supporters. If yeah. you play Wolves, you get 5,000 away. Like Sheffield that. Wednesday, 5,000. So your income is is like doubled and trebled. Yeah. You, and looking you know ahead, I mean? if you want, once you're in that championship, there's even a bigger scope because you're only oh, one good. step away from the big... Uh, absolutely. One good bit of run. See, we've, we've, oh, yeah, um, we've can, been promoted yeah. to the championship twice yeah. in the last 10 years yeah. and we got relegated straight away in the second year... We um, <clears throat> the second time we was there, we lasted another year, and we actually got um, <clears throat> relegated at Crystal Palace on the last day of the season with a record number of points. We had oh, a really? record number of oh. points. Nobody oh. has ever gone down with, that with many the number points. of points we had. So we consider ourselves very unlucky. Very unlucky. Oh, yeah. But with gates of five and a half, six thousand, if we're lucky. We can't compete with the big clubs, even in our league. Sheffield United yeah. get twenty thousand, you know, loads of them Bolton get as well bigger. Now as well. Bolton, yeah. but our ambition is to get back in the Championship and stay there yeah. <laughs> and try to get to the promised land. <laughs> What's it called? The Premier League. Hey! <laughs> 
Right there, the final bit of the team talks for both of you. I, I give, don't I, like this bit. You don't like doing no, it? I don't I, like this bit, no. especially about it. Do you want leave it? Leave it then, but Can we, we don't want to do it. One, we didn't like it. We start a new feature. Basically, I'll give him a scenario and he gives his team a team talk, but he's mm, gone all shy now, I think, because you're No, 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 I just don't like that. You don't like it? Well, let's think of a new feature to end with. Yeah, let's think, go to the pub. That's a great feature. Go to the pub, that's it then. All right, Christmas special. Get Ruddock back in. Barry, been brilliant. We've long enough. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you, my man. It means a lot to me. Thanks for your time, mate. Thank um, you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Um, and Adam listening. as well. He's yeah. son, who I used to play with, by the way. He's a good player. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's calmed down. Um, thanks all for listening. Don't forget to sort of subscribe, share yep. it. Um, and uh, we'll have another, another episode next week. Yeah, what a great episode. Love that. Badge. Thanks Cheers. again. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>